How's it going? Welcome back to our second series of building an A-frame. Um, you can see as the background behind me today, this is similar to what we built yesterday. Um, and so we're going to take this and continue to build on it a little bit more. Um, for those of you that may be joining us on the stream for the first time, don't worry, we'll, we'll be able to get you caught up pretty quick. Everybody that's going to be coding with us today is going to be starting a new project anyways. Um, so just a little bit of background behind this. Um, REPL is going to be the editor that we're going to use. So if you don't have an account yet, make sure to go to REPL.IT. That's R-E-P-L dot I-T. And the language that we're going to be coding in today is really just HTML um, and maybe a little bit of JavaScript. But really what makes this cool is a JavaScript library called A-Frame, which kind of makes all the magic happen. So as far as what we're going to do today, I wanted to get you guys more familiar with how to position items. Um, I know yesterday in the tutorial we just kind of put this sphere and cylinder and box in a cool position. But we didn't really talk about how we decided on those positions how kind of this 3D world is, is made up and, and kind of all of those things. And so that's what I was hoping to do today. And I was hoping to do it with a little bit of a competition. So um, I was thinking about what I wanted to code and I just thought, you know what, why not make a car? And so I built a car. I'll go ahead and actually show you that right now. So this is the car that I created, kind of an old school vibe, obviously super simple. Um, what I did to make this, you can see it obviously looks a lot cooler than maybe what we did yesterday because it's got the cool pyramids in the background. That's called an environment. We're going to teach you guys how to do that today. Um, but also, I just thought we could turn this into a contest. And so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through a tutorial on how to build the car that I built. And then I want you guys to customize it or make your own. And that will enter you inside our competition. We'll put together a Code Changer swag pack with our you know, t-shirt and stickers and buttons and a bunch of Code Changers cool stuff. And we'll send that to you. So um, that contest is going to start today. We're going to take all the submissions um, and grade them by tomorrow by Sunday. Um, so Sunday night, make sure to have your designs in. And the way that you can actually enter them into the competition is you guys can actually just share your REPL link in the comments of this video after it goes live and I'll show you guys how to do that. So we're going to dive into how to get cool backgrounds and how to kind of make something a little bit cooler in A-Frame today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to open up REPL and we're going to make sure we're on the home screen and we're going to click on the blue button on the top right, which is new REPL. And actually, Fear showed me this in the office today. I didn't realize this was a thing. Um, yesterday, we started with a blank HTML, CSS, JavaScript template, template. But today, if we just go ahead in the language and type A and a dash, you'll see that there's this option that says A-Frame Starter Kit. And, it, and also, if, if that's not working, you can just scroll it's almost at the very bottom of the list, A-Frame Starter Kit. And we're going to call this one VR Car. And I'm going to go ahead and create this REPL. So now that I've created this REPL, uh, we'll see as it loads here that it already has the link that we had to type in yesterday. It has our A scene, which is where every single thing that we type needs to be inside of. And then we also have the, the shapes that we coded out yesterday. So we have the box, sphere, cylinder, and the plane. Um, and if I go ahead and hit run, you'll be able to see that they have the same thing that we created yesterday. The only thing that's different about what they created yesterday is they have used different colors. And I just wanted to highlight that for a minute. Yesterday we used colors like red, yellow, green, and we just typed out the color. But if you look inside their box, they use what's called a hex code. And basically, that's how they can get kind of custom colors into their VR world. And if you guys want to go ahead and do that, there's actually a link below in the description of today's class that shows uh, like VR resources. 
Uh, we threw up a, a little web page on Code Changers to be able to show you guys how to do that. So if you click on that link below in the comments, it'll bring you to a page that shows you how to add environments and add colors. But in here you can see that there's an add colors option where you can actually uh, click on the color and change it to whatever color you're digging. And then you can copy that hex code. You can put it inside of those quotes. So instead of inside the quotes like saying red or green or whatever pink, I can just paste that and then click run. And you'll see that now those custom colors will come into effect. So that's just something to show you as we go through. You can always change the colors. I'm actually going to show you how to take this tutorial or this base code that we're given and we're going to turn it into a car. And the way that we're going to do that is kind of with positioning. So if I were to go to this in full screen, uh, this is something that's cool too. You guys all have a link here that you guys can copy and share with your friends. So if I copy that link and I put it in a new tab, it's going to actually pull up that exact code on full screen so we can see it better. It makes it more fun to where uh, we can interact with it. Also, if you actually have like a VR, like a cardboard VR box or VR headset, you can click on this VR button and you'll enter the actual like VR mode. But it knows that I'm on a computer so it doesn't change much, but it'll detect what device you're on and be able to change that. So that's pretty cool. So, but if I were to look into this, um, you guys can see that kind of the, the forward, like just looking straight ahead, that's going to actually be, we need to think more outside the box of just uh, X axis and Y axis because we actually have a third axis, which is Z. So if you think about X, if you want to change anything, X is your first number, X, Y, Z. X is always going to be your left and right. So if I want to move the red ball to the left, or to the right, I'm going to change the first number on my shape. That first number, if it's negative, is going to go left. And if it's positive, it's going to move to the right. So I'm just moving to the right. It actually makes it look the opposite. If I wanted to move my sphere up and down, so if I want to move it um, higher or lower, I'm going to do that with the second number. So x was left and right. y is the second number. That's going to be up and down. And then Z, if I want something to be further away from me, is going to be a negative number. And then the other thing is going to be positive. So we'll talk about that in a, mo in a little bit. But that's going to be crucial when we're trying to put shapes together and turn them into an actual um, code. So I'm going to go in here, back to my code. And I'm going to look at my box, which is my first thing. We can see that we have it positioned a certain way. We have it three away from us, a little bit you know, up in the sky, a little bit to the left. Uh, we also have a rotation. I'm going to take that rotation off. So I'm going to go into my rotation code. I'm going to delete the 4, 5, and I'm going to hit 0. And just to show you when I hit run now, that square is going to be straight now. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do to that square is I'm going to change the size of it, which we don't even have in our code right now. So I'm going to click right after the X of the first A dash box. I'm going to type a space. And I'm going to type height, H-I-G-H-T, and I'm going to set that equal to 1. And then outside of this, I'm going to do a width, W-I-D-T-H, and I'm going to set that equal to 2. Now we can see when I hit run that I have a wider box, but it's still kind of that same... Uh, same depth right there. And by the way, if you want to test out your code, I'm just clicking on this window to make it the active one. And then you can just use the arrow keys on your keyboard and you can move around. And then you can move that screen by clicking and holding and kind of move around and do that. So now this square is going to actually be the body of my car. It's not quite uh, long enough. So I'm going to add another one right outside, right after my width. And I'm going to do depth, D-E-P-T-H. And I'm going to set that equal inside quotes to 5.5. Now we can see here that I have the, the body of my car. Um, but I don't like how when I hit run, like I'm like inside the car. I'm not quite there. 
So I'm actually going to move its position and change that up too. And so I'm going to change its position to 0 so that it's centered. That first number is your left and right. The second number is going to be how high or how low. I'm going to raise my car up just a little bit, 0 0.75. And then that third number is how far it is away from me. And I'm going to change that one to negative 4.1. And that seems like a random number, but just because I made my car already before this tutorial. Um, now we can see that the car is perfectly centered. It's far enough away to where we can, we can see the, the front or back of the car. And then you can see here that now my car has a similar look. Um, since I said I was going to use these exact shapes and turn them into a car, the next thing I'm going to do is turn this cylinder into looking like it's two of my wheels. Um, so this is a good point to just stop and reflect and make sure that our box is looking the same. If you guys aren't getting these results, you're not able to view this, make sure to take the time right now to go to Invite. On the bottom of Invite, I'm going to search for Code Changers. And if we don't show up, just click Add, and it'll add us to your REPL. Ferris is next to me, and he's waiting to help you guys on anything you need. And so if you guys need help, add us to that, and he'll chat with you in the REPL and, and make sure we can help you get this looking kind of how ours is looking. Um, one thing that just bugs me is our ground is green. So I'm actually going to just jump to that real quick. The way that we make our plane bigger is just by changing its height and width. And it's right now it's four. Our car is already five long, I think, five and a half. And so we're going to change that to 100 by 100. I change the height and width numbers, and now when I hit run, this is looking a little bit cooler just because we have, you know, this going on. All right, so now we have our plane, and I told you next we were going to do this cylinder. And so the first thing that we need to think about is I don't feel like the cylinder's probably that far off as far as a radius goes. Like, I feel like that's about the right width for a wheel. It's just right now it's facing vertically and not horizontally. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, inside, inside my cylinder, I'm going to add a rotation. So I'm going to click right after the R of cylinder, type of space, and I'm going to say rotation, R-O-T-A-T-I-O-N. And I'm going to set that equal, and then inside quotes, I'm going to rotate that um, by 90 degrees on the first one, 0 and 0. And then if I hit run you'll see that now it's sitting vertical, but it's not sitting horizontal. And so I'm going to change that one to 90 as well, the second one. Now you'll see that that's now facing the right way. My only problem now is it's not very centered on the car, so it just looks like this weird cylinder out the side. So I'm going to change the position of this cylinder to... Um, so inside my position, I'm going to do zero, and then I'm going to keep, I'm going to change this to 0 0.05, and I'm going to change this one to negative 2.5, which is just going to bump it a little bit over. Let's click run and see how that's looking. So now um, it's actually in the right place perfectly. It just doesn't stick outside the car. So I'm going to change its height. And the height that I'm going to change it to is 2.75. So now I have a wheel, and it's starting to look like it's in the car. The problem now is it's sitting inside the ground and not above the ground. So that means I just probably type the number wrong. And if you look inside my cylinder under position, my middle number, which is my Y, which is the up and down, I did 0 0.05, and I meant to do just 0 0.5. So inside your cylinder, do 0 0.5. I'm going to click Run. And now we'll see here that it's starting to look like a car. I mean, I think you guys can see that, where I have my, my wheel on this side, and then I have my... My wheel on this side so that's starting to look uh, a little bit more like a car I think that looks pretty cool um, since I already started with this one I'm just gonna go ahead and add 
another one because the car that I'm building is just like a traditional four wheel car. So there's two ways we can do that. We can go ahead and just retype this all or we can select it all and copy and paste. So I'm gonna go to the front of my line 10. I'm gonna select all of this code and I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna click at the end of the line and hit enter so that I have a new line. And then I'm gonna paste. Um, on Mac, that's Command C to copy. On Windows, that's Control C. And then to paste, that's Command V. Or on Windows, that'd be Control V. So now um, I have two of the same cylinder. If I did click Run, we wouldn't see anything different because they both occupy the same space. But on this one, I'm just going to change its position. I'm going to change its position so that it's further away and further down uh, the vehicle. So if we think about it, the whole length of our car is 5.5 long. Our first cylinder is two, negative two and a half away, negative two and a half. So we need it to go a little bit further down the car, but not the whole way down the car. Um, so we don't want to go 5.5. We probably want to go somewhere around the 3.5 range. So I'm going to go inside this cylinder and I'm going to change it to 3.5. I'm going to click run. Now if I go to the right side, you'll see that if I was making kind of like a trailer, like that might look cool, but it's still not far enough. So if 3.5 put it here, because these are about one wide, 4.5, 5.5 would be about how far away that needs to be. So I'm going to go back to that number. I'm going to change it to negative 5.5. And now we'll see that when I go look at my car, that I'm starting to have wheels that look probably like they're more properly positioned um, on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them there right now. We might be able to play with those a little bit more in a minute to make them look a little bit better. Um, I was thinking about how to utilize this sphere because I just want to take those shapes and change them into something. So I was thinking that this sphere could be kind of like a head of a, of a little person driving the car. So in order to do that, we're going to make it smaller and we're going to need to position it correctly. So if I go to my A sphere code, which is on my line 9, we're going to change its position and its radius. So to make it smaller, I'm going to go in here and instead of 1.25, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make it uh, 0.25. And then the position on this one, on line 9, instead of 0, 1.25, and negative 5, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And I'm going to change them to 0, space, 1.4, space, negative 4. So now if I hit run, you'll see that I have my little human dude chilling there. Um, but there's some things that I, I kind of would like. I wanted to keep this car pretty simple. I want it to be pretty basic. Uh, but as you can see on my example, I have my guy inside the car. But I have this cool windshield. I have the roof in the back. I think we should go ahead and we should build the windshield. I think we should do that mainly because I think it's cool how it's transparent and it kind of looks like glass and I want to show you how to change objects to look transparent to look like glass. So um, in order to do that I need to get to the right tab then I need to add uh, essentially a box. So all I did was create a box and I made it super skinny and then I angled it the right way and I changed the colors. And so if you guys want to save the time of typing you could copy and paste this box from my line 8 or <coughs> excuse me I can go to this website that I've shared in the comments of this video and I can go to adding shapes um, this will just make it easier to copy and paste I think sometimes we don't have to worry about selecting all the text so you'll see here this first one this box I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the copy button on that and then I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to hit command V or control V and that's going to paste that square into my um, environment. So now when I hit run, 
um, you'll see that I have kind of a random square in here. Well, now I want to change that white square to have the attributes so that it's in the right place. So the first thing that I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to change its position. So I'm going to go inside the position right here. It starts off at 0, 1, and negative 5. And I'm going to change this one on my line 9 to be, now if I hit run, we'll see that it, it's kind of in the, the right place. Um, the problem is it's still like really big, which it's, it's a height one by one. So I'm going to keep its height at one. I'm going to keep its width at two. So now, uh, the reason I keep showing you this is I just think it's, it helps understand kind of how this world is set up. So now it's the right width of the car. It's the right height, but it's just not the right thickness. Um, right here, it has a depth of one. I'm going to change mine to a depth of 0 0.05. Now when I hit run, I have a windshield that's starting to look more familiar, look more like my, my truck right there, but I'm now going to angle that. And so right now, I don't have a way to angle it. I need to add that attribute. So I'm just going to click on the next to the X on the box. I'm going to hit space. And I'm going to add rotation, R-O-T-A-T-I-O-N. And I'm going to set that equal to, um, let's see, I'm going to rotate that one 60 degrees, space 0 degrees, space 0. Now when I hit run, um, I now have a windshield that is looking more like a car. Um, it's looking pretty cool. I just think the only thing that's missing is obviously it's hard to drive out of a car that you can't see out of. And so we're going to teach you guys how to change that right now. Um, how that's, what's that, what that is called in 3D or in A-Frame or 3D renderings of other softwares, that's usually called a material. And so a material is just an attribute uh, about some sort of shape inside of A-Frame. And so just like I added rotation and position and color and height and width and depth, there's one called material. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say material, M-A-T-E-R-I-A-L. I'm going to set that equal to double quotes so that I can start to add the different things in here. So since this is a JavaScript library, somebody has coded out these functions that will help these render a certain way or look a certain way in our world. And so our material has some different things that we're going to add to it. And so uh, the things that I'm going to add are um, the color in here. So the color, C-O-L-O-R, and then I'm going to put a colon, and then I'm going to do a space, and I'm going to type white. And then I'm going to hit a semicolon. So that's the color that we want. It. We've already defined that in the shape, but when we're using a material, we need to actually define it inside the material. So now I have the color white. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sides that I want to apply this to. So I'm going to say side, and then I'm going to do a colon and a space, and I'm going to do double. So uh, that just means all both sides of the material are going to be uh, clear, not just like the front or the back. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to do transparent, T-R-A-N-S-P-A-R-E-N-T, -E colon, space, true. And then the next one I'm going to do is opacity, O-P-A-C-I-T-Y, and I'm going to do a colon space, and I'm going to do uh, 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and do a semicolon, and then let's go ahead and hit run and see what's going on. So now when I hit run, you'll see here that uh, we have this clear shape. Um, it's looking pretty cool. I like how there's already that kind of that light you can see reflecting off the windshield right there. Um, 
just to show you this, if you were to change some things, like you can totally change this to any attributes. I want you guys to kind of play with that and see what looks cool for you. Like I could totally make that a red windshield and like why not, right? So um, yeah, that's actually cooler than the one I made before, I think. Um, I think I have a cool world in mind for where that's going to be. So I'm going to keep that as red, uh, but you can see that you can change these attributes in opacity. I changed that one to a lot higher. And so you'll see that it's much darker of a light. If I change that to you know 0 0.1, then it's going to be um, a lot uh, a lot more clear. Whoops. A lot more clear in here. So you can play with all those attributes and just kind of customize it to make make it look however you want it to. So it's got a, a slight red tint looking a little bit clear. I'm gonna keep it as that. So now if I if I go back to my code, you'll see that I've added the shapes to my car so that I have kind of this back. Um, really, I didn't think necessarily that I needed this, but I thought, you know, it would be a little bit lame to just stop the tutorial here. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just click on that other tab that has my links. I'm gonna copy another box and I'm gonna paste that um, in here. So right after the last box I added, I'm gonna click at the end of the line, I'm gonna hit enter or return, and then I'm gonna paste the box into here. Um, this box that I'm gonna be adding is um, my, my back part and so let me just look at the code I made earlier. I'm going to add and change some of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure it's the same color as the car. So the first thing I'm going to do to this box is I'm going to change its color to the same color. So instead of white, I'm going to do a number sign and I'm going to do 4CC3B. I'm going to capitalize those letters to make it the same. So now when I hit run, you'll see that I have kind of that blue box in there where I want it. But with this specific one, I want to move it further back and um, I want to put it in the right place. And so for this one, I'm going to do a position... and I'm going to do 0 space 1.25 space negative 2.9. I'm going to do a height of 1 but a width of 2 so it will be the same width as the car um, but I don't want it to be super thick. I just want this one to be probably 0 0.2 and I think rotation I'm just going to keep I'm not going to add that. I'm just going to keep it at 0, 0, 0. So now, by adding that, you can see here that I have the back of my car. Um, now I'm going to add the roof of my car. So I'm just going to click at the end of my line 10. I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to paste. Oh, I copied the color, so I'm just going to go quickly to the reference website. I'm going to copy the box code, I'm going to paste the box code in here and I'm going to change its position to um, to a height, I'm going to change its height to 0 0.05 because I don't want it to be super skinny. I want its width to be 2, its depth to be 1.8 and then I want its position to be 0, space 1.25, space negative 2.9. And then I'll hit run there. You'll see that it added it here flat. Now I just need to move its position so that it's up on top of the roof. And so um, let's think about that for a second. If I have my box, oh, I see. 
I added its position as the same position as my previous box, but I need it to be, I just copied the wrong line, so I need it to be 1.75, and then I need that to be a little bit further down, and so instead of negative 2.9, I'm gonna do negative 3.7. So now it's higher up and it's further down. If I click Run now, We'll see that my roof is chilling in the right place. Um, it's a white roof right now. And so I'm just going to go inside my code and change the white. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to use the same hex code, which is the number sign 4CC3D9. Now I'm going to hit run. And my car is looking a little bit more legit. Looks like an old rat rod, an old 1920-something cool car. So the last thing I'm going to do is add that last angle that's on my car. You can see this, this little part here. I was trying to think what would make it look kind of cool, and that's what I ended up with. But I'm excited to see what you guys create. So I'm going to go to the end of this line. I'm going to hit enter, I'm going to paste the new box, and then this box I'm going to change to the same color. So I'm going to do a number sign, 4CC3D9. I'm going to change its position so that it's 0, 1.5. 2.5 and I'm going to make this one negative 2.5 and I'm going to need to add a rotation to this one because this one's angled. So after those quotes I'm going to do a space and I'm going to do rotation R-O-T-A-T-I-O-N. I'm going to set that equal to negative 70 degrees, space zero, space zero. Let's just see what we have so far. We'll see that it's chilling right there. I actually think that looks like borderline cooler than what I had before. Um, actually looks pretty cool. But we'll just change it a little bit more. Um, I'm actually going to go with, with the look here so that uh, it looks like maybe I'm I'm carrying something in the back. Let me just look from the side. I want to see what that looks like. That looks pretty cool. Um, so really, what I'm going to do is I just don't like how right here this sticks up. So I'm going to just move that down a little bit. So down is our middle number. That's our y-axis. I'm going to move that to 1.15. Actually, think that looks pretty cool. Yeah, keep it. Um, if we wanted to make like something's actually in the bed of the truck, then we just need to make it a little bit closer to us. So that last number, our Z, we're going to do that one to like 2.1. And then you can see that when we run it, yeah, yeah something about that is just a little bit cooler to me. So there we go. We have our car. It's looking... Similar to what we, this is what I thought we were going to be building, this is what I built before, but that's what's cool about being able to create on the fly and for you guys to be able to create your own car um, is now we have something to go. So now our car, is, as far as this tutorial is um, running, it's finished, but the coolest thing that I want to show you is this part on how to get it so that uh, we have these super cool backgrounds. So what that's called is that's an environment, and it's something that's created by, uh, I think somebody made a library. I should give them credit and find that. Um, I'll be able to give them a shout out tomorrow. But on that same resources, you'll see over here we had our adding colors, which is kind of that first thing that I showed you where we can click on this, change the color, and, and paste it in kind of. Well, um, we can also add environments. So if I go to this add environments, in order for us to be able to add it, we need a link to their JavaScript library that, that they created. And so um, you can see here, 
under adding environments, there's all these cool ones. This just shows an example of, of some of those. Um, but we can just copy this script. So I'm going to just click the copy button on this first script. I'm going to go to my REPL. And then I'm going to go up inside of my head section. So we have our A-frame library. I'm going to click at the end of this. I'm pretty sure our environments has to load second. So we want to make sure we're after this first script. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to paste that um, into our code. I don't like how it's not aligned right. So I'm just going to hit tab twice so that it's lined up inside the head. Um, so now I have the script that allows us to use A-frame. I have our second script that allows us to add our environment. And then now all I have to do is I just have to go back to this um, add environment page. And I just need to add this little bit of code. This is what makes it so cool. I just need to go in here. Um, I just need to click that copy button. Go into my REPL and then right inside my A scene tag. So right as my A scene starts, I'm going to click on the end. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to paste this in here. And then I'm going to talk about really what this is doing for a second. And I'm going to show you how cool it looks. So I'm going to add this in here. I'm going to hide my files for a second so that this looks a little bit better. So it's just called an A entity. And so an entity is really we could make any of the shapes we just made um, with an entity, but they're just easier as a primitive. Um, but all I do is add an entity, and then I add an environment, and then I use one of the presets. So right now the preset colon default, if I hit run, this is going to show my, my thing um, looking how it is. But the problem is the plane that we have, it's interfering with this material that we just added with this environment. And so um, we do want to keep a plane because really just this, this uh, look that we're getting is it's kind of imaginary in the sense that it doesn't have any physical um, presence in the sense that um, for our car to sit on a surface, it's not going to work. We still need our plane there. And so once we add our environment, a good trick to do is just to go to our plane and change the middle number, change the y-axis, um, change that to like 0. Point, sorry, negative 0. 0.2. And now you'll see that the plane isn't there anymore. We're just going to have our, our world showing up in the environment. But the plane is there, it's right below that environment so that it'll still be there for like later if we're shooting a ball or if something needs to bounce off that or drive on that. That's what that's gonna be. So um, I know you guys are thinking like, well, how did you get the Egypt world or how did you get that going? So this up here on the, on the top left of my screen, these are the different names that you can add inside of your code. And so um, I might actually hide this over here real quick. So if I were to go into my code and I find my, my entity that has the environment, I can change this word, the, the word default. So keep preset with a colon. But anything after that colon, um, I can go ahead, like I could type one of the options I, I see up there is gold mine. So G-O-L-D-M-I-N-E. Now if I hit run, with the change of just that one keyword, I'm going to have my car chilling in like this super cool environment that makes it look awesome. And so, um, yeah, that's super cool. I'll just show you a couple more that I like. Um, and on top of Goldmine, the one that I had in mind said that red windshield was Tron. So if you go in there and then click on Tron and click run, you'll see that this is a super cool environment. Uh, based off the movie Tron. It's, the reason I like it is if you get it in the right light, look off the windshield, there's just like, I don't know, it just looks super cool. So you guys can go around. The one that I'm probably going to end up on today instead of Tron is probably going to be Forest. So I'm going to type Forest there, and now I hit Run. And now my truck is chilling. And it's chilling in the forest. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, oh, I'm just going to show you too. I'm going to go ahead and hide that screen. But I'll just show you. If you guys do go to that website to add the environments, 
you'll see on the bottom that we've typed out all of those presets for you. So if you want to look at what any of those numbers are, have this as a reference, make sure to go to that codechangers.com slash lesson slash VR. And that's going to take you to these resources that are going to show you how to add colors, customize your color of your car. It's going to show you how to add shapes or easily add shapes. And I want to see what you guys can come up with. So here's kind of uh, the going forward before I sign out for the day. Um, you guys have the ability, like I said before, to share this to anyone. So that's what's so cool is you have your REPL, which hopefully you've added us to. You've clicked invite. You've added code changers at the bottom. And we can help you and, and kind of help answer any questions or help you make things look a certain way. But if you want to just share this or have it look cool on someone's phone or, or whatever, you can copy this link. And uh, if you just open a new tab and paste that, you can view that inside of the browser. And it's going to be full screen. It's going to look really cool. So that being said, when you guys create a car for this contest, I hope somebody enters so that I can see that um, you have entered this competition by that link. Um, tomorrow when I go on my live stream at 3 o'clock, if you guys have even like a version of a car or if you want me to, sh to highlight you, um, paste it into the links of this YouTube video after it's live. You can't comment while it's live, but after, afterwards you can. And then I'm going to be able to check out your guys' car and uh, give you some love tomorrow on the live stream and kind of show off your code to anybody else. Another thing that's really cool and the last thing that I'll show you for the day is... I think it's super confusing it's at the start, especially when you're making a car, to be able to remember the X, Y, and Z and kind of how that works around. And they've made a really cool way to do that, but you have to be in kind of this live view. So if you go to REPL and you copy that link and you paste it into another tab, you can do a, kind of a keyboard shortcut. So um, it's kind of like inspecting your code in HTML. I can just click on the screen and I can do... Control Alt I, the letter I, and this will load a visual inspector. This is one of the coolest things about A frame. And so um, this will help out a lot. So I can actually go in here and, and kind of zoom in and move around. And let's say I wanted to change, like, my, um, let's say I wanted to change. The wheel and I wasn't sure exactly where to do it I can grab any of these buttons so you can see that by doing this and by changing its position that I'm actually changing the, the values these are all the attributes of this shape and a lot of these things we, we've never even explored but you can see like the colors in here the height the width you can see the main ones are the position rotation and scale so position is, um, you know, changed here. If you guys want in this visual editor, you can go in and you can change this to look how you want it to look. And then all you have to do is look at these numbers and copy them into here. So now I move my wheel more forward. The position is 0 and then 0 0.392 and negative 6.159. So now that I see those, it's not actually changing it on our real code. It's just changing it in the browser so we can easily you know, modify it and make it look cooler. I'm going to go back to my REPL. I'm going to find that cylinder that I, that I coded out, which is actually going to be this one. And I'm going to change its positions to follow those. So the position was 0 0.392. And instead of negative 5.5, it was negative 6.159. So I'm going to go in here, negative 6.159. Now when I hit run, my car's wheel is going to be further to the front, and it's going to look exactly how I wanted it to um, from the sake of looking at that tutorial. So um, that's going to be super helpful. As you guys are getting confused, you can just go to that live view. And then if you want to go back uh, to how it looks normally or if I want to see the updated thing, 
I can just hit refresh on this screen. It'll refresh my actual view um, in here. And then to open that debugger, open that, in, um, it's just going to be control, alt, and the letter I. And that's going to how it's going to be in here. So that's going to be your best friend as you guys are creating worlds. Um, I want to see what you guys can come up with and create. I'm excited to see it. Uh, please hit us up and, and reach out to us. You can go to our website and just click on the chat bubble on the bottom right. Or you can just add us to your REPL and then we'll be able to help you. Don't forget to add that uh, this link to your code inside the comments of the YouTube so I can give you a shout out tomorrow. And then uh, we'll check out all the submissions or all the links um, and announce that on our stream on Monday, April, I think, 6th. And so, yeah, uh, we want to see what you guys can come up with. Tomorrow we're going to dive more into um, how to make these a little bit more interactive and how to make them so that they're more of like a game or so that we can interact with it. We're going to show you animations tomorrow. So you can animate certain parts of your scene so that they move instead of just stay in one spot. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us on social media so you can see what other competitions we have going. We want to keep you guys busy as uh, most of us are chilling at home quarantined. Um, yeah, remember that you guys are code changers. Change the world with code. I'm out.